Hi, I'm the Revy AP. Welcome to the Making of featurette for the Dope Fiends Anthology, Volume 1, entitled Wanted the Dope Fiends. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a quick look of how this project went from conception all the way through to the implementation and the DVD that you now are watching as we speak. So buckle your seatbelts and get ready to go for a ride, because it's time to get dope. The title of the Dope Fiends is a double entendre. On one hand, it definitely refers to the vulgar sense of a dope fiend, and the story explores drug usage and drug abuse. But on the other hand, uh, as Karita says, if you're going to be a fiend, be the dopest fiend you can be. And so I've taken the word dope and used it as an adjective instead of a noun. A lot of times, dope now means cool, hip. Uh, so. You're a, a dope fiend. You're a hip character. The idea for this project first came to me when people would ask me what kind of music I played in my band. If I said I play reggae music, does that mean I'm in a reggae band? Or if I'm in a rock band, am I still able to play a ska song or a punk song? So it started with the idea that music has character. And I kind of developed that thought into, if music has character, why can't music be a character? The idea for the story of the Dope Fiends Anthology came to me just through various experiences I've had in my life. Uh, things that I've learned or meaningful ideas that have occurred to me, I've taken and put into lyrics and translated that into the songs that are the characters of the dope fiends. Uh, those characters then enact a story, and uh, that story takes place in the format of both a comic book and comic strips. Uh, the idea was that the overall story would be divided into much smaller fragments that each have their own bit of meaning and, and bit of purpose behind them but all together would form a much larger or broader picture. What you're about to see now is the process I go through to create the puppets. Uh, any individual dope fiend has about four stages of life. Uh, the first is an armature stage, uh, and then there is a flesh or a body out stage. Uh, they have a wardrobe, process that they go through, and then the last stage that I do is to create faces. Uh, this is just a real brief overview to kind of show people what it goes through to make just one individual dope fiend. For any individual armature on a puppet, there are several different types of materials I like to work with. If it's going to be just a real background puppet, they're not going to need to support a lot of weight, or if they themselves are going to need to be supported by another puppet, I like to use something out of real light material like pipe cleaners or uh, soda straws. Um, if it's a little bit more active of a role for the puppet to perform, and they need to fill out a little bit more space and have a little bit more weight, I like to use these wooden model mannequins for uh, drawing. And the last set of armatures that I use, these are the professional stop motion armatures. They're manufactured by Armaverse.com. Uh, they're stainless steel. They're made basically of ball bearings, screws, and these little uh, steel plates with different lengths of holes in them. These are really great armatures because you can set them in any position and they will retain that position. Uh, you can also manage them into any different kind of skeletal configuration you need. Uh, as you can see there are some characters that have extra limbs like wings or something. And then when you're done you can just break them down and build a regular humanoid skeleton again. These next set of photos are the second stage of a puppet's life. These are the flesh sequence. The first step on knitting a puppet, uh, I always like to, when I choose the color of yarn, paint the skull. 
into the same kind of color, something that matches so that if you see it through the knit, you really won't pick up on camera. After that, I tend to do the torso next, and that gives you an idea of the kind of dimension and the lengths that you will need to crochet when you do the legs and the arms. After you've got the arms and the legs attached to the torso, last step very simply is to seal up the back except for that one slit that allows you access to your armature. Just a real brief explanation of ordinarily in this kind of puppeteering, you would see puppets that have skin made of some kind of plastic or foam or clay. I have decided on amigurumi, which is a Japanese style of doll making where all of the flesh and the bodies are crocheted out of yarn. This is really easy, very cheap, and at the same time, uh, you can leave the skins open at the side so that you can switch skeletons in and out of them, and that way you can have only three or four skeletons performing uh, any number of character puppets you like. This next stage of the puppet making involves the wardrobe. You can see it really wouldn't do well if all the puppets were running around naked. Uh, so all of these clothes are hand stitched. They're all made just very simply out of different materials. Some are cotton, some are khaki. This jacket here for Benjamin Prime, this is made out of a faux suede. I also like to use as many different styles and textures as I can get into the puppet and the wardrobe so that it really breathes a lot more life into the character that you're trying to perform. And the last step of the puppet making is the faces. These faces here are different sets of expressions for one particular character, the main character, Mayam Agination. All of these faces are made with a baking clay uh, this is Sculpey 3. You pop it in the oven for about 5-10 minutes per, you know, 3 centimeters of thickness. And you can make yourself virtually any kind of expression that you might need. This next little segment is going to be about how I create the sets. Or uh, what kind of goes into the background and the world of the Dope Fiend. For the first volume of the Dope Fiends Anthology, a lot of my set construction was based around matte painting and digital photography. What I would do is make a set out of a white laminated cardboard and then photograph the puppets along with any elements that they needed to physically interact with. Uh, such as pieces of furniture or props or plants and then that's combined separately with I made a series of paintings of just the far landscape uh, behind them and I would combine those in Photoshop and get a very wide range of where these characters lived and where they were but at the same time, it still felt very handmade. Something else that I like to do, uh, and I intend to do more of it as I progress the story, you can see in these strips, the background that the characters are in is mold, photographed at a microscopic level. I have access to a camera that hooks up from your laptop directly to a microscope or to a telescope you're able to take pictures of anything that you want to look at at that level of magnification. I thought it was interesting that the characters go into mold at a microscopic level in the story and it was very easy to just digitally combine them uh, from white screened photographs onto the microscopic images that I obtained. A few of the sets that I have are actual interior sets. Uh, all of these are built completely by hand and at scale so that uh, the puppets actually fit inside and can interact with them as if they were actors on a real soundstage. And I, I would like to mention also at this point, a big part of the set construction is the construction of props. 
Everything that you see that the puppets interact with during the course of the story, from Mayim's guitar to Karita's pipe to the food that they eat, all of that has to be made. Any opportunity I have to scavenge, anything that I find that is at the scale of these puppets, and they stand about 12, 13 inches tall, depending on the height of the bodies, I will take advantage of that. Yeah, I definitely enjoy finding tiny little things. The purpose of my having gone through this work is to hopefully show people how inspiring you could be. Uh, people that inspired me, like Jim Henson or Dave McKean, uh, have kind of made me want to give a little bit more of myself and what's inside of my imagination back to the world, hopefully to inspire people over the next, you know, 10, 30, 50 years into the future. Uh, I think it would be really cool if because of something that I did or said in my work, somebody else went inside of themselves and found the strength to be creative, found music inside of them or art, and gave that back to the world and back to everybody else. Uh, it's kind of just a uh, engine to keep creativity rolling and rolling. So, with the best intentions in mind and heart, uh, this is the Revy AP. I'm thanking you guys for hanging out with me these uh, last couple minutes and checking out what I go through in order to be a dope fiend. You stay fine. This is the Revy AP. Peace out.